Let us draw near to God with a true heart and confess our sins to God, our Creator, asking God, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, to grant us forgiveness. Let us pray. Master, we have worked all day and night for many months and years. We yearn for a heavy catch, a full church, an abundant feast. Forgive us, God, when we are too tired to cast our nets one more time, when we are too stubborn to do things a little differently. Have mercy on us when we are too afraid to dive into deep waters and take a risk. Grant us grace that we may proclaim your word, work for your kingdom, and trust your promises. Lots of good music, and, uh, but about an hour before the service, uh, 
the church and several surrounding areas lost power. So her, her marriage was held by candlelight, which she wasn't expecting. But it was a wonderful afternoon, and our prayers and thoughts and best wishes are certainly with Anna and with John. If you still have not made your appointment to be photographed for the church pictorial director, please do so today. The response has been uh, overwhelming, really. Uh, there are uh, some time slots left in the evening on both Monday and Tuesday. There will be members of our church growth and fellowship committee at a table in the foyer today after the service to schedule your time. Next Sunday, the first Sunday of October, will be our annual observance of World Communion. This one Sunday of the year where Christians around the globe gather together to celebrate the Lord's Supper. I hope that you will make a special effort to be with us next Sunday morning for this special time of communion. Also, as part of next Sunday's service, we will receive the annual Peacemaking Global Witness Offering one of the four special offerings of the Presbyterian Church USA. This offering is used for our denomination's uh, efforts in peacemaking around the country and around the world. Each local congregation, it keeps 25% of the offering received, and our session has designated our 25% to be shared with world medical relief efforts that are currently taking place in Haiti. You'll note the special announcement in the bulletin about over the next few weeks, the mission committee will be collecting various items to share with world medical relief, which is housed right here in Southfield, Michigan. These items will be collected and taken there and then will be sent to Haiti to help with the relief efforts following the, uh, the uh, earthquake, which was followed two days later by a tropical storm in Haiti last month. The list of needed items appears in today's bulletin. Our 25% of the peacemaking offering, as I said, will be shared with World Medical Relief. Also next Sunday at 1 o'clock will be our annual Blessing of the Animal Service outside. This has become a tradition for us here in the fall. Uh, we, we are joined by neighbors in the neighborhood who bring their dogs and, and cats over, and it will be a wonderful afternoon. If you are unable to bring your pet with you, you are, you are encouraged to bring a photograph of your pet. So that will be at 1 o'clock next Sunday afternoon. And then finally, uh, our first Wednesday of worship will resume on Wednesday, August 6th at 7 o'clock p.m. These monthly services are held in our chapel, and our first service next Wednesday will feature a hymn singing, and the hymns will be selected by you, the members of the congregation, who are with us next Wednesday night. So mark your calendar for Wednesday, October the 6th. This coming Saturday morning at 11 o'clock in the chapel, there will be a memorial service for Cherry Hill member Roxy Love. So I hope that if you are able, you will join us for that service. If you are unable to leave, be here. Please remember her husband, Brian, and her children uh, in your thoughts and prayers this week. If you have been worshiping with us for a while and would like to learn more about Cherry Hill or if you are interested in becoming a member of this congregation, I would invite you to join us for our next new member orientation, which will be held uh, about a month from now on Sunday, October the 24th in Chapel Carter. Attendance at this class does not require you to join. However, if you decide you'd like to make Cherry Hill your church home, you are required. So whether you just want to explore or, or learn, we invite you to join us on October 24th. New members will be received by the session on Sunday, October 31st. And this is really, and finally, Judy has a special announcement this morning from the mission here. Christ's Net is a mission to help homeless people who have a job and do not make enough to rent living quarters. 
Several churches in the area provide sleeping quarters for a week at a time, providing three meals a day. Cherry Hill has provided a full dinner one night of the week that is held at First Presbyterian. This year is different because of COVID. First Presbyterian will not be hosting overnight stays, but will provide lunches for one week during the week of October 24th through October 30th. We have pledged to help them with the cost of lunches for one day. We are asking for your help. We are asking for your loose change and any folding money you could find that you would be able to contribute. The date of collection will be October 10th. Thank you. Simon Peter saw it. 
he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Go away from me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. For he and all who were with him were amazed at the catch of fish that they had taken. And so also were James and John, son of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. Then Jesus said to Simon, Do not be afraid. From now on you will be catching people. When they had brought their boats to shore, they left everything and followed him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. May the words that are spoken and heard and in our lives enacted be faithful and true and formed by your grace, O God. For it is in the Savior's name that we pray. Amen. Fisherman, I am not. Once and only once, I was invited to go deep sea fishing, I think it was, with a family in our congregation when I was out on the far east end of Long Island. I had never been deep fishing, shallow fishing, any kind of fishing before in my life. I pictured in my mind we would go yachting uh, on, the, on the ocean or something with free snacks and beverages, maybe even lunch or something, but rather we spent the day on some death trap of a boat, and, but still we had a wonderful time as we were out there gliding through the, the you know, the waters. It was wonderful until we got out into the really deep water and the motor was cut off and we were supposed to start fishing. Well, the boat was rocking and rolling and rolling and rocking and rocking and rolling and rocking and rolling and, rocking and, rolling and my stomach was getting queasier and queasier. My fellow passengers that afternoon caught, I think, about 43 fish, and I threw up 43 times. <laughs> like I said, a fisherman, I am not. But Simon was a fisherman in our reading today. Poor Simon, he and the others had been fishing all night long and they caught nothing. Simon was discouraged and defeated. As he and James and John were cleaning their nets, Simon looked over and he saw this Jesus of Nazareth doing some teaching by the Sea of Galilee. Many of the 150,000 people from the villages around the lake were pressing in on Jesus. And so Jesus asked Simon if he might get into his boat and go out just a little way into the shallow water so that he could use Simon's boat as a pulpit. Well, Simon was glad to arrive. He, he, they pushed out just, just a little, and Simon was probably sitting in the back of the boat as they pushed out into the sea. And since he could see Jesus' back, he could see the faces of those who were listening to Jesus. Believe me, these people had come with a lot more than just empty nets. They had come with empty hearts and empty souls and empty minds. These people were hungry and thirsty for something. They, they hung on Jesus every word. We, Simon could see it in their faces. And so after he had finished preaching, Jesus said to Simon, Okay, Simon, go out into the deep and cast your nets there. Now, I don't know about you, but as Jesus says that to Simon, I can see Simon sitting there rolling his eyes. It must have taken all that he had in him not to snap back at Jesus and say, Well, listen here, preacher man. I do this fishing for a living. This isn't just a hobby. I do this every day. Last night, 
we fished and we fished and we fished all night long and we caught nothing. And we're not going to catch anything again if we try again. I'm just tired. I want to finish cleaning up here and go home. Besides, preacher man, putting the nets into the deep water is a horrible idea. Everybody knows that the fish feed in the shallows in the morning. Stay in your own lane, little preacher, and leave the fishing to the pro. We all have some area of life that we are the expert, don't we? And we all have some area of life where we work really hard. Have you ever noticed that's the hardest place for us to take orders from Jesus? Oh, we believe Jesus is in control when it comes to things like, oh, the gospel. We believe his words can change the world, can change lives. That's why we're here today. But when it comes to something that we know about, like taking care of children, or dealing with our mother, or working in an office, and we hear all this talk about letting Jesus be Savior, well, then we wonder, does Jesus really know what he's doing? It's not that we actually claim to know more than God does. That would be a ridiculous thing for us to say. It's just that we believe we know more about our life than Jesus does. I can't help but imagine that Simon must have felt that way when this Jesus, the young carpenter turned preacher from Nazareth, suggested that Simon cast the nets. However, there's even more. Did you catch it? Not only does Jesus tell Simon to get back to work, come on Simon, give it another try, cast the nets again, he told Simon to push out into the deeper waters. Go out into the deeper waters, Simon. We can relate to that too, can't we? We like the shallow waters, right? I mean, the shallow waters are familiar and comfortable to us. Staying in shallow water is such a temptation because in the shallow water, you can see what lurks at the bottom and you can see where your feet are stepping. In shallow water, it's fun to just sort of wade around the edges. We can dip our toe in when we feel like it. When we stay in the shallow water, if something gets a little too much, we can retreat back to the safety of the shore rather quickly. Yeah, we are safe. We are in control in the shallow water. Shallow water has worked very well for us in the past, for the most part. In the church and in many businesses, we understand the voice of the shallow water, which says to us, no, we're not going into the deeper water. Uh, we like the shallow water. We've always done it this way. But did you notice? Jesus doesn't allow Simon to stay in the shallow water. Rather, Jesus told him to push off into the deep water. Deep water is where the increase is. However, the deep water can be risky. You don't always know what's in the deep water. Which is why the temptation is always to stay in shallow water. Not much risk in shallow water. It doesn't take a lot of courage. It doesn't take a lot of faith. It's, it's in the deep water where we often have to go in order to get what God has for us. Let me give you just a different metaphor. 
I said that I know next to nothing about fishing. I know even less about football. Still, in American football, to go deep is when a wide receiver runs very far down the field in the hope that the quarterback will throw a very long pass to him. If the receiver catches the ball, the glory of the touchdown will belong to that team. If that's not right, I don't want to know. <laughs> but in the event that I'm right, let me put it this way. We are on Jesus' team. And he has called a play for us. So go deep. Go flat out. Whatever you do in the world, whatever you're called to do, go deep. If you're a mom, if you're a dad, if you're a grandparent, an aunt, an uncle, a citizen, a church leader, a Christian, whatever it is, put your heart in whatever it is you do in life. And go deep. You never know what the deep may have in store for you. You never know what you can miss in life. If you stay in the shallow. I love this story about a little boy named Paul. When Paul was about five years old, his dad, who was a construction worker, had a job in Park Rapids, Minnesota one summer, and he took little Paul along. The deal was that Paul's dad would work all day while, while Paul sat in the truck or through dirt cloud clods at the construction site, but they would go fishing every night. That was the highlight of the trip for Paul, fishing with his dad for five straight nights. Well, apparently, Paul couldn't wait, because on the first afternoon, his dad looked down from the roof of the building that he was working on, and Paul was sitting on a bucket, fishing in a puddle in the parking lot. <laughs> His dad ran down and got Paul to stop fishing in that puddle by explaining there aren't any fish in a puddle, son. He didn't criticize his son for fishing in a parking lot. He didn't humiliate Paul for casting his line into muddy water that was probably only about five inches deep. He simply told his son that there were no fish there. And later that day, they go to a wonderful place where there were fish. And that made total sense to a five-year-old boy. To only cast our lines in places we knew there were lots of different fish. Perhaps some of the most incredible fish Paul had ever seen. All Paul had to do was to trust his father and to trust that his dad was right as they sought deeper seeds together. I wonder, are we content to just fish in a puddle where there are no fish? Or are we willing to answer Christ's call to push out with him into deeper lives? Did you notice that Simon didn't tell Jesus off? <laughs> That's not a good idea. <laughs> Rather, Simon says to the Lord, we've been fishing all night. We caught nothing. Then he said that powerful three-letter word, Y-E-T, yet. We've been working at this, Jesus. Not working so well. Yet, if you say so, we'll do it. I think yet is one of the most powerful words of faith. And if you're going to be a follower of Jesus, you better get used to saying it because Jesus continually calls us to follow him into the deep waters where we may not always 
And when he does this, instead of coming up with lots and lots of excuses, instead of saying, well, Jesus, I would, but, try the word of faith. I'm kind of scared, Jesus. I'm not real sure how this is going to go. Yet, because you ask it, I'll give it a try. And off you sail together. That's what Simon did. And you know, as it turned out, this young carpenter, preacher from Nazareth, he knew a thing or two about fishing that Simon had never imagined. And they put their nets down in the deep water. And there were so many floundering and flopping fish in the ropes that they had to call for help because the nets were beginning to break. There were so many blessings in that deep water, they couldn't handle them all. Now we might read or listen to this familiar story and say that the net full of fish is a miracle, and perhaps it is. But I think the real miracle in this story is that Simon decided that Jesus could be trusted and that he was ready to push off into deep, unknown waters. He was ready for new discoveries. discoveries. He was ready to learn a whole new way of living. He was willing to take a chance. And that's when the real miracle always begins when we are ready to leave the shallow water and go deep, go deep with the Savior who's in our heart. I think the real miracle is that the Savior's in the boat with us. So as I think about this story, I can't help but wonder to what water is, to what deep water is God calling each of us to today as individuals, as family members, as a church? Where are the deep waters in our lives that we've been avoiding in favor of the shallow water, the shallow waters of familiarity and safety? Only you know what it is Jesus is calling you to. But odds are, if it feels as if the water's just a little deep, that's precisely what Jesus is calling you. We just close with this. A, a session in a Presbyterian church in the Midwest. <laughs> Not cherry. <laughs> A session at the, at the Presbyterian Church in the Midwest felt that they were being called out to some deep water. Really deep water. And they found themselves in the middle of a heated debate about the health care center. This Presbyterian Church in the Midwest was asked to join with other churches in helping to fund this health care center. Most, if not all, the patients that came to the center were poor, dirty, diseased. They were the lowest of the low. And these elders were going back and forth, trying to decide all the angles. This was brand new for them. They had never been involved in anything like this before. Believe me, this was new, deep water. This was an important spiritual moment in the life of this church and in the life of one of the elders. One elder argued vociferously against supporting the clinic because, as he said, some people who go to this clinic might be illegal immigrants, or they may be these people who know how to work the system and take advantage of what the center is trying to do. We're supporting illegal activity. We're just wasting money. We should, we've never done anything like this before. We're against it. I'm against it. We shouldn't do it. And the counter argument from someone on the other side of the issue said, but they're human beings. And so back and forth this, this went. 
And the only solution in good Presbyterian fashion was no resolution. And so they tabled the resolution until the next meeting. And they stayed in the shallow waters. This made that first elder so mad that he grabbed his papers and his coat and he walked out of the room and he slammed the door behind him. I guess you could say he was ready to burst, but not quite. A couple days later, the pastor of that church invited that elder out to lunch. They had a great lunch, they had a great discussion, and the pastor took some took the concerns of the elder who had spoken against venturing out in the deep waters of supporting this health center very seriously. On the ride back to the church, the pastor said, would you mind if we were to stop at this health care clinic for just a moment and see for ourselves what goes on there? Well, the elder was a little uncomfortable about that, but he said, well, I've never been over there, so I guess it's okay. This elder who had spoken so strongly against the clinic walked in, and he was amazed to see the hustle and bustle of all the activities. There were a lot of single moms there. There were a lot of frightened, troubled children. There were a lot of elderly people. There were a lot of middle-aged people. There were just really a heck of a lot of sick people. The elder and the pastor, they just sat in the corner and they watched the scene. The door would open and the nurse would call a name and a family would go in. At one point, the door opened and she called for a little boy who was four years old to go in and get his shot. The boy's mother gave him a little kiss and a pat on the back and he marched bravely to go in, to go in and get his shot. And he was already rubbing his arm because he knew it was going to hurt. He marched in and the nurse closed the door. About ten minutes later, the door opened and that little four-year-old boy came out, biting his lip. There was a big tear rolling down his cheek. And he looked all over that waiting room for his mother and his little brother. And they weren't there. You see, his mother had gone in with his little brother to another examining room and she was in there. And this little boy continued to search frantically for his mother, but she couldn't find her, so he looked for a friendly face. And he found that friendly face on a person you'd never expect to find one. In the face of that Presbyterian elder, who was so dead set against this center. And this little boy walked right over to that elder who was seated with his pastor. He climbed up on that elder's lap and put his head against his chest. The elder remained motionless, not sure whether or not to touch the little boy. But ever so slowly, the elder put his arms around the little boy and held him tight. The elder himself was rather shocked and surprised at his display of compassion for a little boy he had never met. Well, it came time for the next session later. And when they got to that, to the old business part of the agenda, that elder rose and he said, I owe this session an apology. I got a little, no, I got pretty hot last month. I got, uh, I said some things I wish I hadn't, and I slammed the door, and I'm so sorry. I shouldn't have behaved that well. I was discounting all of you who feel so strongly about missions and benevolence and caring for those in need. I feel strongly about it too. And I'm sorry for my behavior. I was thinking of resigning from session, but I'm not going to do that now. I'm glad we tabled the motion to support the health care center because it gave me time to think and to pray. It gave me time, although he didn't say it. It gave me time to test out the deep waters. 
And tonight, I knew that we would support that health care clinic because there are people there who are in need. There are sick people there who need it. And that's all about us. And so they started the center. And to this day, that ministry to the homeless and those in need in that community, that health care center continues to thrive. It has expanded three times. It's helping people get well. It's saving people's lives. It's one of the best ministry those churches have ever had. All because that elder and that session were willing to venture out into some deep water where Jesus was home. All because they were willing to have faith and go deep. Hey, Simon. Hey, Janet. Hey, Paul. Hey, Pam. Hey, Dave. Hey, Josh. Hey, Cora. Hey, Carolyn. Hey, John. Hey, Sandy. Fill your own name. Will you put down your nets today and venture into the deep waters? Will you go deep? Will you go deep with Jesus and let down your nets Oh, it might be a little scary. The water might be a little intimidating. But don't worry. The Savior is with you. Are you willing to go deep with Jesus? If you do, get ready. Because you never know what God has in store.
what we believe, using the words of the Apostles' Creed as they are found in the bulletin. I believe in God.
Jesus the Christ. And we ask now that you hear us as we pray the prayer that Jesus taught those closest to him. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. with all those whom you love and with those whom only God. 